everyone, Jamie Madison here. We're going to start this card off today from the Simon Says Stamp Card Kit. I had these two papers that I was inspired by to do this card with the blues and the pinks and then the um, splatted colors on the other one I wanted to do a background. So just a cute little card and we're going to go ahead and get started on this. I do love the you are a treasure and love and hugs. So. Hopefully you can hear the dog in the background. I'm babysitting my dad's dog, Jersey. She is a great Pyrenees golden retriever and she is a big baby. So these are the three florals that we're gonna do from the Simon Says stamp kit that came in the June box. I'm gonna go ahead and get those three stamps positioned here so we can go ahead and stamp those. And we're gonna watercolor those today. Just clearing my desk. I have so much stuff on my desk this <laughs> during this filming here. It's a little bit of a mess going on, so I'm trying to get a little bit better organized. I love thinking of getting organized, but actually getting organized is always so much harder to do. And then I end up pulling everything out and thinking, oh, I'm gonna get everything organized, and then I have a bigger mess than what I started with. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those back in there. Like I said, I want to try and stay organized. Try. That's the key word. Alrighty. So I'm going to get my watercolors out. Um, I think I have the Koi watercolors right now because I like I'm really new to card making, and so every card is something new and I learned something from doing it, so I really enjoy that. Um, I learned so much from all the girls on here that do the card making, so it's, it's always nice and relaxing to watch other people and how their ideas work. So I'm just going to take my um, painter's tape. This is for delicate areas on the walls. I is what I got is super light tack but sometimes it still pulls my paper so um, still not completely satisfied with my tape but I just have a little um, clipboard I guess you could call it it's a plastic one figured it would be easier to wipe clean for me so I'm just getting that all taped down I'm using the Canson XL watercolor paper and I'm going to go ahead and fast forward it uh, through the watercoloring because I took my time a little bit with this watercolor. So I didn't want to make the video super long on you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and watercolor and then let you enjoy the music.
Alrighty, welcome back. I hope that was relaxing for you. I always love watching people watercolor. It always relaxes me. So we have our green, purple, blue, and pink, purple flower here. And I'm just going to go ahead and quickly fussy cut these real fast. Alrighty, so once I fussy cut them, I have my Nina uh, solar cardstock in 110 pound. I went ahead and um, cut that and then I also grabbed another paper of the Canson XL here that I'm going to go ahead and wet down. This is going to be our background for the card. So I did the other one in pink. This one I figured I would do in blue so they would be a little bit of a different correlation in colors here. So I went ahead and just added a, a nice it looked like cobalt blue to me at first, but it ended up being a lighter pale blue, so more of like a sky blue. Um, I really don't have colors on these. That's the only thing bad about that kit is I just don't know what these colors really are, but I do have a color swatch on the side, um, so I kind of know about what color it's going to be when I put it on the paper, but sometimes it's a surprise. Um, keep this up. I'm just going to make this dry a little faster. The good thing about watercolor, though, it's very forgiving because I accidentally just smudged it there. I'm going to see if I can try and fix that. Yeah, right there is where I smudged it. So I'm going to just take my same brush that I just used with a tad bit of more of that blue color, and I'm just going to go over the top of that, and I'm going to add some extra water to kind of blend those little lines out. There, you can never tell. <laughs> I can tell completely. You know, whenever you do something, you always see that little spot that you did, even though other people can't see it. But we're going to put some um, paint splatter on top of it, so we won't see it after that. And I'm just going to go ahead and heat dry this real fast again as well. Alrighty, now that it's done heat drying, I'm going to go ahead and do my paint splatters on the front of the card. I'm going to wipe that clean and I'm going to go on to the next color, which is going to be pink. I'm going to splatter that pink on and then just keep going through the steps. Splatter it on, wipe it up, go to my next color. The one thing that I did notice though whenever I did this paint splatter, it didn't do it to me on the first card for some reason, but on this card whenever I went to stamp the main flower image with the leaves and the buds, I had the hardest time getting the paper to actually lay down um, so my magnets could hold it down because the image was so big. So that was my one problem I came across. And then my other problem, which actually ended up working in my favor, I actually ended up liking it, was one of those paint splatters, the pink, reactivated whenever I was coloring in the um, top rosebud. But you'll see that later in the video. I actually ended up liking it, though. And I might try that on a flower in the future with um, a green and some, some pink. It looked really good together. So as you can see, I'm having a little bit of an issue because those two corners just wouldn't stay down. So I end up getting my tape back out, my painter's tape, and I had to end up taping both of those corners down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut through that real quick so you can see me still fussing with that, that piece of paper. It was aggravating me, but we just keep on going through it. But lesson learned for the future use a bigger piece of paper and then cut it down. <laughs> you know, and I even thought I cut like almost all of me messing around with this image out, but I guess I didn't cut enough out because I really was messing around with that image. I just could not get it to be in the spot that I wanted to get it into. So I went ahead and grabbed my VersaFine and Onyx Black again, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that with the Onyx Black. 
I think I end up having to do two passes on that to get the um, color that I wanted it to be as dark as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get my watercolors out again. And I'm just going to fast forward through this. But you can see as I'm doing this rosebud, you'll see that red just kind of, or the pink kind of reactivated. But I end up really liking it. So I just went with it. Um, but for the leaves, I just used a really dark green down the center. And then I used that um, light green. That I used on the one flower so they would complement each other. I ended up really liking the way the leaves turned out. And then for um, the smaller rose buds right there by the other leaves, I ended up using a purple. I think out of uh, both cards, I like this one the most because the first one was more of a trial and error, and then this one. Um, I felt like it was more fine-tuned, so I guess the third one will be almost spectacularly perfect, so <laughs> one could only hope. Alrighty, so now that that is all colored in, but you see how that rosebud, it's just almost like it was a fresh rosebud that just about to bloom into a nice, you know, pink, pink flower, but just hadn't got there yet. Just really enjoyed that. So on the top for the sentiment, I'm going to put, um, you are loved. The only thing I wish on the sentiment was the UR was a, just a tad bit bigger. It's it's quite small. Um, that's my only negative. Is some of the sentiments are kind of s on the smaller side and it doesn't do the picture justice I feel. Um, it could be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and center that to where I like it so it's kind of off center and then I'm also going to stamp that back in the um, VersaFine and um, Onyx black as well I can't believe how slow I am at doing some of the things <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that was not going to be upside down because I have done that before I got all the way to the finish of a card and I accidentally stamped the sentiment upside down because I wasn't paying attention. So I'm going to go ahead and take some double sided adhesive and um, I had the double sided adhesive roller um, for the main card and then for this flowers I used these pre-cut foam squares and I'm going to tell you where I got these at because this was such a great deal. This is from Dollar Tree in the hardware area. Um, so like where other tools are or the, like the home stuff is. They have this in a huge roll. This is one roll divided in half. So I have two little containers from this one roll. And it was only a dollar. And this adhesive is strong. If you put it somewhere and you don't want it to move, it's not coming back off. It's going to rip your paper trying to get it back off. So that's the only negative. Make sure when you put it down, it's where you want it because you're not probably going to get that back off. I've actually got some on my mat and I had to get some um, stuff to scrape it off because it was not budging. So if you have a Dollar Tree around you, I would run to the store and, and pick you up a couple rolls of it because it's so cheap and you get so much for your money. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the double-sided adhesive um, foam tape on these two flowers and then the center one, I'm going to double up on it. I'm going to put some on the flower and then I'm also going to put some on the paper so it sticks up a little bit higher than the two on the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those backing and I'm going to just go ahead and put those in place. And then the backing also removes super easy as well. I know some um, foam tape is just, it really wants to adhere. So on this center one is the one I'm going to double up. Alrighty, so now that I have that in place, we're so close to being finished with the card. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take my Nina Solo White and 110 pound. And I'm going to go ahead and score that for an A2 size card. And then you can bring out your 
additional sequences or glitter. I'm going to put um, the, I think it's the Wink of Stella in clear, um, where the pollen is on the flowers. Um, after I score this, I'm going to go ahead and adhere that. And the double-sided tape that I used, I actually ran out two inches from the bottom, so I had to get my little uh, dots out. And those are the ones that I was saying are um, really hard to get the backing off of them. For some reason, I don't know if I just got like a bad batch or if that's just normal for them. But um, yeah, they never want to come off. So, and then I will say, make sure that you have it lined up perfectly because I about messed up. I about dropped the card and um, it was not going to come off if I dropped it. So, after I finally got that lined up, I'm sorry, it's a little out of frame. I didn't realize that I've gotten lower on the camera. Alrighty, so I'm just going to go ahead and smooth that out so it folds nicely. And then, this is where you could be done. If you didn't want to go any farther, this is a beautiful card. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of glitter, because I love glitter. And I'm just going to test it on my map, because I don't want to score it out like it did whenever I first opened the pen. And I just added that wherever the pollen would be on the flower. And I think that looked really nice. Alrighty, well it looks like we finally finished the card. Thank you guys so much for joining me. There's a side by side of the two cards and you can make this your own. You have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for uh, coming and hanging out with me. Bye.